Hello, my name is Peter Caulfield, and I am a sophomore in mechanical engineering at Gannon University. This academic year, I have been working on research with Dr. Ike Chuku Ohu from the Industrial Engineering Department, centered on a novel means of differentiation between novice and expert providers of endotracheal intubation using Hurst exponent based analysis of motion data. To begin, I'll give some background on the topics of this research. Endotracheal intubation is a somewhat common medical procedure, with millions being performed each year. It involves the placement of a flexible tube through the vocal cords and into the trachea. It is most often used in emergency medical situations or within intensive care units. Endotracheal intubation allows for mechanical ventilation in various situations, such as airway obstruction due to laryngeal trauma, lung infections, or heart failure. To date, there is no objective measure for determining proficiency in endotracheal intubation. Providers are certified qualitatively. They are watched as they perform this procedure by experts, and these experts determine whether or not they are proficient. Their certifications are renewed on a completely arbitrary basis because it is unknown the period of time after which a healthcare provider will become unproficient in this procedure. Thus, it is desirable to find an objective measure of proficiency. This would allow for a quantitative measure of the proficiency of a healthcare provider, as well as help in determining the amount of time needed between renewals of this certification. To aid in determining such a measure, this study makes use of the Hurst exponent. The Hurst exponent is a metric of time series data which has been in use for almost a century. It was developed by Harold Edwin Hurst, head of the physical department of Egypt in the early to mid 20th century. It indicates the long-term dependence or anti-persistence of a system. Long-term dependence means that if a system takes on a certain value for a specific parameter, it will be more likely to take on that value for the parameter in the future. Anti-persistence is just the opposite. If a system takes on some value for some parameter, in the future it will be less likely to take on that value. Hurst used his work to aid in sizing the Aswan High Dam in southern Egypt, and also to determine how its outflow should be regulated. The Hearst exponent has since been used in many other situations, in such varied fields as finance, electronics, and the health sciences. In this study, Hearst exponents of motion data for both novice and expert providers of endotracheal intubation were calculated and analyzed. In the summer of 2017, 44 medical providers performed endotracheal intubations at Gannon on a surgical dummy. Of the participants, seven were experts in emergency medicine and 37 were students in medical school. Each of these participants performed the procedure six times. Data from each of these trials was captured using Xsense IMUs. These inertial measurement units recorded the roll, pitch, and yaw of the back of their hands and the back of their wrists at a rate of 40 hertz. Last fall, I began conducting a Hearst exponent analysis of the data. I used the rescaled range analysis method for estimating the Hearst exponent. This is similar to that used by Hearst himself. The method is as follows. First, the data sets are divided into epochs of varying lengths. For this analysis, the epochs chosen were the entire data set and the data set divided into halves, fourths, and eighths. The average values of the data for each of these epochs was calculated and subtracted from each value in the data set. This formed the mean adjusted series. 
In the mean adjusted series, each entry was then added with the previous to form the cumulative deviation series. The range of the cumulative deviation was then found and divided by the standard deviation of the data. This formed the rescaled range. The rescaled range was then plotted on a log-log graph. The common logarithm of the rescaled range was plotted versus the common logarithm of the number of data points per set. This yielded an approximately linear graph. The slope of this graph is the Hurst exponent. The Hurst exponent can take on values between 0 and 1. 1 indicates strong long-term dependence in the data, 0 indicates extreme anti-persistence, and 0 0.5 completely random data. The first implementation of this algorithm was in Microsoft Excel. It used built-in functions and Visual Basic to automatically calculate the Hurst exponent for data sets of any length by jumping from cell to cell to perform each calculation. The complete data sets for eight participants were calculated this way. The initial hypothesis was that the values for novices would tend to be lower than those for experts. This is because the novices might be more random and erratic in their motions as they're unsure of what they're doing. Experts, on the other hand, would be calm and controlled. However, this turned out to be false. An examination of the Hurst exponents showed that the values ranged from 0.6 to 1, regardless of whether it was experts or novices who were being examined. A second hypothesis was that the values for novices would rise from trial to trial, while those from experts would hold steady. This is because as time went on, the novices would likely become more sure of themselves, more sure of what they are doing, and thus less erratic. Shown are the average values of the Hearst exponent for the four novice participants across the six trials. The various graphs are for the roll, pitch, and yaw of the four different IMUs. No particular pattern is seen across these six trials. The values rise and fall, but not in a general trend. The same is true of the experts. The experts rise and fall, but the undulations have no particular pattern. However, there is one set of averages which has proven extremely interesting. This graph shows the average values of the Hurst exponent for the four different novice participants across all six trials for the roll, pitch, and yaw of each of the four sensors. Each of these data series corresponds to one of the novice participants, with the dark blue being the average. No particular pattern is seen here. They rise and fall without seeming rhyme or reason. However, it's a different story for experts. This is the same graph for experts. Although there is a great change in magnitude of the Hirsch exponent across the different experts, there is a definitive pattern. There is a great rise from the roll to the pitch of the right hand, and then a smaller decline down to the yaw. There is a gentle change in the left wrist and a great change in the right wrist, a similar pattern to the right hand. For the left wrist, the values hold relatively steady. This discovery was very exciting, but the Hearst values for all the participants were needed to gain insight into whether or not this pattern was indicative of proficiency or whether it was merely random. To speed up the process of calculation for the other participants, a MATLAB-based implementation of the rescaled range analysis has been created. This implementation runs about 4,000 times faster than the Excel-based one, and it is allowed for the calculation of all the Hearst values for all the participants. The discovery presented here is very interesting. It provides strong evidence that the Hearst exponents of motion data 
for endotracheal intubations contain markers of the proficiency of the provider of the intubation. Further work will allow for a more comprehensive understanding of these markers. Hopefully, they can be developed into a definitive test for proficiency. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation, and thank you for watching.